Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Born Suzanne Louise von Richthofen. Suzanne von Richthofen was born on the 3rd of November 1983 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Her father, Manfred Albert von Richthofen, was a German engineer and her mother, Marisa von Richthofen, was a Lebanese-Brazilian psychiatrist. The von Richthofen family were a famous aristocratic family with relatives including Ferdinand von Richthofen, a German traveller, geographer and scientist who is noted for coining the term Seidenstrassen, Silk Road. Additionally, Manfred von Richthofen, known as the Baron von Richthofen and most famously the Red Baron, was a fighter pilot with the German Air Force during the Second World War. The family were also relatives of the First World War German aviator Lothar von Richthofen, as well as Rothfram von Richthofen, a German Field Marshal of the Luftwaffe during the Second World War under the Nazi regime. Moreover, the family was related to Ambassador Hermann von Richthofen, who was the German ambassador to the United Kingdom from 1989 to 1993, as well as NATO from 1993 to 1998. Manfred Albert von Richthofen was born on the 3rd of February 1953 in Erbach, Germany, in the state of Baden-Württemberg. He moved to Brazil following a job offer. The von Richthofens both met while studying in the 1970s at the University of Sao Paulo, briefly studied in Germany together before returning to Brazil. Manfred Albert von Richthofen was a director of DERSA, Desolvimento Rodoviario SAA, a state-owned company responsible for some state-built roads and highways in Sao Paulo, as well as chief engineer for the Rodanel Malo Covas, a planned and partially built beltway of Greater Sao Paulo, which was 177 kilometers in length and had a radius of 23 kilometers. It is expected to be completed in 2022. Magicia was considered to be the most outgoing and popular member of the Richtofen family. Richtofen was one of two children with a younger brother, Andreas Albert von Richtofen, born on the 26th of April 1987. Andreas was considered to be shy and introverted and had few friends. He spent most of his time watching TV or on his computer. The family lived together in Brooklyn Velcro, a mostly upscale neighborhood in Sao Paulo. The people living in Brooklyn Velcro are primarily of German and French descent. Brooklyn Velcro directly translates into Old Brooklyn in English. Graduating from a German high school, Richtofen started studying law at the Pontifical Catholic University of Sao Paulo. Considered to be the second best university in the state of Sao Paulo, it is ranked as the 11th best university in the country and between the best 801 and 1000 universities in the world, according to the QS University World Rankings 2021. The Richtofen family had declared a net worth of 5.5 million Brazilian rias, which is approximately $987,500. Manfred von Richtofen also had two anonymous accounts in Swiss bank accounts, equating to 10 million euros, which he opened in Suzanne's name in November 2001. It is widely suspected, albeit never proven, that Manfred von Richtofen had embezzled money from DERSA. It is estimated that their wealth equated to a combined 17 million US dollars. In August 1999, the family went for a walk in Ibirapuera Park, a central park in Sao Paulo and the most visited park in Latin America. There they met Daniel Calvinos de Paula Silvia, aged 18, who was a model aeroplane competitor. Andreas asked his parents if he could become involved in model aeroplane competitions with Calvinos. The pair became close friends and began riding bikes and racing race cars together. A nervous Suzanne asked her brother to approach him with a note telling him that she thought he was cute. The pair began dating frequently incognito, including hiding in the boot of a car as well as meeting in a motel room where they smoked weed. Initially, Richtofen's parents supported their relationship, believing that it was fleeting, but began to dislike it when Suzanne began giving him money and it was revealed that Daniel's brother, Christian, was admitted to hospital for cocaine dependency, had significant debts with drug dealers, and was acting as a police informant. 
Furthermore, the couple both smoked weed almost every day, with Richterfen also trying ecstasy and at the age of 16 lost her virginity to Kavinho. She then became isolated from friends in order to be with Daniel and struggled without him during a New Year trip to Porto Seguro in the southern state of Bayach in 2000. As a result, Richterfen did not attend her high school graduation party and once she attended university, he started taking her to and from her lectures. Upon discovering that Kavinhos was involved in drugs and that their daughter was unmotivated to study in late 2001, her parents attempted to break up the relationship between the two but were unsuccessful, and she started seeing him on the sly. However, this quickly went south in April 2002 when she lied and told her parents that she was staying at her best friend's home, which turned out to be a lie, as she spent the night with her boyfriend. As a result, Richterfen's parents banned her from dating Kavinhos. On Mother's Day 2002, on the 12th of May 2002, Richterfen refused to go with her parents and brother to a restaurant in Sarroque, causing her father to beat her for the first time. When they returned, she promised that the relationship was over, but continued to see Kavinhos incognito, unbeknownst to her parents. In May and June 2002, Richterfen's parents made calls to the Policia Militar do Estado de Sao Paulo, the Sao Paulo State Military Police, in an attempt to stop Kavinhos from entering their home. In July 2002, Richterfen's parents went on holiday for a month, with Kavinhos moving in with Richterfen and her brother. Richterfen described this time period as like a dream. When her parents returned and Kavinhos moved out, Richterfen suggested to Manfred von Richterfen that he buy her an apartment for herself and her boyfriend to move into together, which her dad refused as she would have to buy the apartment herself with her own money. In early September 2002, a fight took place in the family's home with Manfred Richterfen trying to prevent Kavinhos from entering their home. The 12th Battalion of the Sao Paulo State Military Police attended the home to break up the fight, with Manfred threatening to kill Kavinhos. It was then that Richterfen and Kavinhos, now aged 21, decided to murder her parents and utilize Kavinhos' brother Christian Kavinhos, aged 26, to participate in the murder. The planned murder was orchestrated for months. At midnight on the 31st of October 2002, Richterfen checked to see if her parents were asleep, and then, having disconnected the alarm system of their home and surveillance cameras days before, opened the door to the Kavinchos brothers, who arrived in a Volkswagen Golf, which they had parked in the family's garage. The brothers then went upstairs to the parents' bedroom, hit them with iron bars and strangled them with towels. Manfred died instantly while Maricia was awoken. Trying to defend herself, she had three broken fingers and Christian was forced to beat her five times before putting a towel over her mouth to stop her imploring him not to attack her children, who she believed were sleeping. After confirming that the two were dead, Daniel Kavinchos placed a gun belonging to Manfred near his arm next to the bed and covered his face with a towel. Mauricia's body was wrapped in a plastic garbage bag, which Richterfen had left on the stairs. While her parents were being murdered, Richterfen waited calmly in the living room downstairs. The three simulated a break-in by pocketing money that they found, spreading papers in the library, and created a mess in the house. They also stole money and jewels, which were kept by Christian. Richterfen and her boyfriend then went to the Colonial Motel on Avendia Ricardo Jaffet in the Ipiranga region in the south zone, staying in the presidential suite and paying 300 Brazilian reals or 54 US dollars. Ordering a Coca-Cola and a snack of ham, they stayed at the motel from 1.36am until 2.56am, having been there merely to create an alibi. Christian Kavinchos went to his grandmother's apartment. Andreas Richterfen had spent the night at an internet cafe before being picked up by Richterfen and her boyfriend. Returning the next day on the 1st of September 2002 to their home at around 4am, the trio discovered the crime. Richterfen began praying. Andreas was given a kitchen knife and waited outside the home while Kavinchos called the police at 4.09am. However, police doubted that this was a robbery from the get-go. The first police officer to arrive on the scene was Alexandre 
Paulino Botto, who noted that it was a crime committed by amateurs, as jewellery and cell phones were dropped and a gun was left in the room in which Richterfen's parents had been murdered. Police were also confused by the alarm system being switched off, and based on the appearance of the library, it seemed that the robbery had been set up. Richterfen was also very cold and impassive when told that her parents were dead. At 4.30am, the Kavinhos family arrived and began consoling the Richterfen children. Bizarrely, Richterfen was seen in the home swimming pool with Daniel Cavinhos on the 1st of September 2002. In accordance with Brazilian tradition, her parents were buried immediately after their bodies were found at the Redentor Cemetery in the west of Sao Paulo. Two days later, believing that she had gotten away with the murder, Richterfen spent her 19th birthday on the 3rd of November 2002 with friends. The first major clue for police came when Christian Kavinhos bought a motorcycle a few days after the murder and paid for it in $100 bills, using the money that he had been paid to commit the murder. A few days later, on the 9th of November 2002, the trio were arrested. Police threatened to arrest Andreas, which quickly forced Suzanne to confess that her brother was not involved in the murder of his parents. On the 30th of November, Richterfen was transferred to the Carandiru Women's Penitentiary in the north of Sao Paulo, where she was kept alone in a cell with a bed, television, shower and toilet, a luxury for Brazilian jails. Daniel Cavinhos was sent to Bellum 1 and Christian Cavinhos was sent to Bellum 2. But why did the trio commit the murder? Well, according to Richterfen's lawyer, Denivaldo Balni, Richterfen had no motive at all but was forced into the crime by Cavinhos, who she adored like a god. Additionally, Balni claimed that Richterfen was raped by her father, which her brother denied. It was also claimed that both parents were alcoholics, but no alcohol was detected in their bodies during the autopsy. In reality, Richterfen's motives were simply to get her parents' money and live with Daniel Cavinhos. In May 2005, the now aged 22-year-old was released from prison when the Supreme Court of Justice granted a habeas corpus, allowing her to remain under house arrest during her trial. During this time, the Cavinhos brothers remained behind bars. The Richterfen case deeply shocked Brazil and changed the country's perception of what killers looked like. The Cavinhos brothers were uneducated, unemployed and drug addicts. In essence, they fit the bill of what Brazil believed to be a mass murderer, while Richterfen was from an upper middle class family of German and Lebanese descent, well behaved, did ballet, spoke three foreign languages, studied law at university, and always did well at her university studies, as well as attending a German high school. However, this pretense did not last long when Richterfen appeared on the TV show Fantastico. Fantastico is broadcast on Rede Global and is a news magazine TV show, having been broadcast from Rio de Janeiro since the 5th of August 1973 and continues to run to this day. It is currently on its 47th season. One of Brazil's most popular TV shows and broadcast every night, it averages 21 million viewers a night as of 2018, but during Richterfen's case it was seen by 31 million viewers a night and had an audience share of 47.3%. On the 5th of April 2006, having negotiated for Richterfen to be interviewed for six months, producers and journalists showed up at her home to interview her. She was made up to appear as an innocent, naive, blonde-haired girl wearing a t-shirt with Minnie Mouse printed on it, wore rabbit slippers, had bangs covering her eyes, and she started the interview showing pictures of her friends and family. Throughout the interview, she put all of the blame onto her ex-boyfriend, who she said had destroyed her family. However, unbeknownst to Richterfen, cameras were rolling when she was told to cry during the interview in order to gain public sympathy, which she refused to do, as she could not fake tears. When this went to air on Fantastic on the 9th of April 2006, public opinion for the most part went against what prosecutors would later call the personification of an evil blonde. She was re-arrested on the 10th of April 2006. On the 5th of June 2006, Richterfen, as well as Daniel and Christian Cavinhos, went to trial in Sao Paulo for homicido qualificado, the equivalent of first-degree murder under Brazilian law. However, the trial was delayed, with Cavinhos' attorneys insisting that they needed more time with their clients. 
When the trial finally started on the 17th of July 2006, both of the Kavinchos brothers cried while in court. But by contrast, Richterfen acted very coldly and was even once spotted laughing during the trial. The trial was broadcast on TV Justicia, a Brazilian TV channel administered by the Supreme Court and an equivalent of Court TV in Brazil. As many as 5,000 people signed up to take one of the very valuable 80 seats which were available for the audience in the courtroom. Her defense attempted to place the blame on Daniel Cavinjos, while the Cavinjos brothers attempted to blame Richterfen. In the end, it was found that Richterfen was indeed the mastermind of the killing of her parents, and she was sentenced to 39 years and 6 months in prison for the crime. Daniel Cavinjos received the same sentence as Richterfen, while Christian Cavinjos received 38 years in prison and 6 months sentence for conspiracy. In February 2013, the Cavinos brothers received the right to a semi-open regime where they could go out during the day to work and return to the prison to sleep. They were also able to get certain days off, including Mother's Day. Imprisoned initially at Camidro Penitentiary, Richterfen was transferred to Tremembe Prison in August 2014, before she also went into a semi-open regime with the right to work during the day while sleeping in prison, as well as certain days off, including Mother's Day. In October 2014, she married inmate Sandra Regina Ruiz Gomez, who was sentenced to 27 years in prison for kidnapping and murdering a teenager in Sao Paulo. As a result, she changed wings and started living in a wing for married prisoners. Gomez was formerly the girlfriend of Elise Matsunaga, who was arrested in 2012 for killing and dismembering her husband, Marcus Matsunaga. When Gomez was transferred to São José dos Campos Women's Resocialization Center, the pair divorced. In May 2016, Richterfen was confined to a solitary cell in the Tremembe prison due to providing the wrong address that she spent Mother's Day at. After 10 days, she committed a serious offence in the semi-open regime which was suspended and as a result she was returned to a closed regime and unable to leave the prison. Rogero Olberg visited his sister in prison and met Richterfen and the pair would marry in 2017. She was then moved to a semi-open regime with a right to study and work as well as five temporary trips back home, including on Mother's Day. As one of Brazil's most infamous killers, while at home she has profited from her infamy including selling her autograph for money. Her brother Andreas lived in Villa Cogonjas in Sao Paulo with his uncle Miguel Richterfen and his maternal grandmother Lords Magnani Silvia Abdullah from November 2002. He started studying pharmacy and biochemistry at the University of Sao Paulo, the top university in Sao Paulo, between 2005 and 2009, before gaining a doctorate in organic chemistry in 2010 from the same university. In September 2011, he moved to Zurich, Switzerland. In 2011, he sued Richterfen for half of her inheritance, including the money paid out on her parents' life insurance, one of her main motivations for murdering her parents. The case was found in favour of Andreas. The case has become infamous in Brazil, with multiple books written about the case, including the 2009 book The Fifth Commandment, the 2011 book The Murder of the Parents of Suzanne, and the 2020 book Suzanne, Assassina e Manopolo Daga. Two Brazilian movies were released in September 2021, The Girl Who Killed Her Parents and The Boy Who Killed My Parents, respectively telling the story of Richterfen and Cavinjos, which created significant controversy due to a belief that the movies romanticized the crimes, which led many to call for a boycott of the movies. Thank you for watching, please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment, it helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.